And listen to this. Then you don't fight them. Because there is a misconception about jihad. They think jihad is to kill the people. Who said that? No. Jihad, or the fight, it's only a means. You look to it. When every, all the attempts failed, and there is a stumbling block in the way, so you remove that stumbling block. So it is the da'wah that comes before everything. Calling the people to the hidayah. We know that Islam is the right deen, the correct deen. We have no doubt. We can prove this to anyone. And we know Islam is the solution for all their problems. The problems of the entire humanity. We know Islam is the light. And we want this light to reach everywhere. If you don't want this light, you are free to refuse it. No problem. We don't force you to accept it. But don't stop us from taking it to others. Are you following? Don't block the way. Say, no, I don't want the light. And I will not allow this light to go to those behind me. You have no right to do that. You have no right. We have to remove you. Then and only then you use the, 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 the force. Because there is someone who wants to stop. And he wants to deprive others of benefiting and receiving the hidayah and the guidance. Are you following me? That's it. That's why, لا إكراه في الدين, no compulsion in religion. The Prophet Wasallam in Medina. The Jews were in Medina. Did he force them to become Muslims? No. Three tribes of the Jews in Medina. Banu Qaynu Qa'a, Banu Nadir, Banu Quraidah. In Medina. He didn't force them. As a matter of fact, he signed peaceful coexistence. Living in peace with them in Medina as citizens. That's what he signed with them. Agreed with them. The non-Muslims, they lived in Muslim countries for centuries. In Egypt, millions and millions of Arab Christians. That proves that Islam was not spread by the edge of the sword. But by the sword of the intellect, yes. The sword of the intellect, yes. Islam convinces the people. Islam opens the, the, peop the people's hearts. Islam answers the people's queries. But doesn't force anyone. لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغيب No compulsion in religion. قد تبين الرشد من الغيب the truth stands clear. You want it? it is, that is the truth. So it is so distinct from the misguidance. So they, we don't force people. But if you become a stumbling block, you have no right to do that. Because this is the kingdom of God. And His kingdom should be run according to His According to his law. Are you following? Okay. So, here, the Prophet ﷺ said to him, then advance with ease and gentleness, 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 gentleness until you arrive in their midst. Then call them to Islam. So the first thing, what do you do? Call them to Islam. Present the truth. Present the light. Tell them this is the light. You are in darkness. Come. Come out of this darkness. And then, you will be having the, we will have the same rights. You don't want? Let us take the light to others, please. Allow us to go. You can stay as you are. 
This is your property. This is your, your wealth. This is your land. It is yours. We are not going to take it. Imagine. We are not going to touch it. As a matter of fact, we are going to protect it. In Islam, the non-Muslim who lives in that land as a citizen, it is the duty of the Muslims to protect him. You know this? The duty of the Muslims to protect him. And even if that country is attacked, still it is the duty of the Muslims to protect the non-Muslims. Are you following this? They are not obligated, though they are citizens, to fight the invaders or the attackers. The Muslims are the one who should defend them and defend the country. The Muslims' children dying on the front lines and the children of the non-Muslims are sleeping peacefully with their families. This is what Islam is about. Can you find a system like this? No way. No way in the world. No play. You find something like that. You live peacefully among the Muslims. Muslims, they take care of you. They protect you. They protect your wealth. They protect your children. And when there was an old man, non-Muslim, was begging, and Umar saw the old man, he said, what? Who's that man? He said, he's Dimmi, non-Muslim. Say, what is he? What is he doing? They say he's begging. He said, "Oh my God, this is unfair." When he was young, he used to give us the tax to protect him, and now he's old. We leave him, give him from Beit Al Mal, give him money to live an honorable life, a respectful life. Give him from Beit Al Mal. I don't want to see a non-Muslim begging. Yes! Mu'allafa qulubuhum. That is the non-Muslims you give them. And the Prophet ﷺ used to give a lot to the non-Muslims. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet ﷺ gave him one complete valley full of camels. And the man went to his tribe and said, Why are you staying here? By Allah, I went to the emperor of Persia and the emperor of the Romans. No one gives like this one. He's so generous. Go and follow Muhammad. Go. Yes. So this is our deen. And we want the whole world to know about it. This is what Islam. We are not thirsty for the blood of the people. A'udhu Billah. Who says this? This is completely falsehood. This is it's not the reality. It's not true. We have the light. We want everyone to enjoy that light. And see what we did in the past. And the contributions we did for humanity. Did we dummy the humanity? No. Wherever the Muslims went, people benefited. And people, they left in harmony. In Spain, the scientists were working together, Muslims and non-Muslims. The Jews in Spain, they were living peacefully with the Muslims under the Islamic State. And when the Muslims were driven out of Spain, the Jews went with the Muslims. They left Spain because they felt they, they would be, they would, uh, they will be insecure in Spain in the absence of the Muslims. So they said to the Muslims, take us with you. And the Muslims, they took the Jews with them. And they settled in Morocco and this. And that's they may have many Jews in Morocco. Even today.
This is the reality. 